Inspired bags, yay or nay? Have they scratched my itch or have they not? Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hello, my name is Danny. Welcome to my handbag channel where I love talking about handbags. I love talking about luxury handbags, contemporary brand handbags, and any beautiful bags in this world that I may be obsessed with. If you like that kind of content, certainly do subscribe, turn on notifications so that you've been informed every time I upload a video. I would love to have you back in all of them. So today's video are going to be about my inspired designer bags or my distractor bags in other words. These are bags that I purchased instead of buying the creme de la creme that I actually wanted. A luxury lover is a luxury lover, but a luxury lover doesn't always have the budget to afford all of the luxury that she loves. <laughs> so I'm also really open to experimenting with different bags and therefore I've gone ahead and purchased some bags that are like the real thing but not the real thing. I'm not talking about fakes because I find fakes somewhat awkward in the sense that, well, because I do like visiting designer stores and I would feel awkward carrying a fake in the store which would mean I probably wouldn't go in anyway so I find fakes do limit me from doing things that I want to do. <laughs> do I own any fakes? I'll be honest. Confession, some skeletons coming out of the closet here. Yes I do own some replica pieces but most of them I acquired in my much much younger days. I was like in my younger 20s I was still a student. Again most of them were gifted to me. Say someone's traveled to a country where a lot of these replicas are sold and they're not necessarily top grade replicas. Like I could look at them and I could tell that they're not real. And some of them for sentimental reasons depending on who gave them to me. Some of them because I just feel like the quality of the bag is still so good. I haven't reached the stage where I'm willing to just throw it out or donate it. <laughs> so I have so many things out right now because of all the bags that I want to talk about. I'm going to go relatively rapid fire otherwise this video is going to be forever. I have categorized them to inspired bags that have scratched my itch and they have distracted me well from buying the creme de la creme super expensive item. And then I have a couple of maybes and I also have the ones sitting here behind the camera that have not done it for me. I either went ahead and purchased the creme de la creme or I still want the creme de la creme. In no particular order, the first bag that I've got here, this one is my really awesome nylon bag. It is so squishy. This bag is from Gorman. I love taking this bag for travel and I still do that like every single trip. Even if sometimes I find I don't use her, I don't really care because she's really lightweight and she falls down to hardly any mess at all. I usually just bring her just in case. I've decked her out with this really cute keychain that I got from Disney. So it's a keychain, picture of a chair on the front and it's actually a mirror on the back. I got this from Japan at the Gotemba shopping outlets in the Disney store. Okay, so what was this a dupe or a distractor for? I bought this because I was after the Lululemon Everywhere belt bag. I know the Lululemon belt bag is not that expensive anyway. At the time where I had been really spent trip already and I was feeling a bit guilty, so I'm like, well, I kind of really want a bag that's similar to that. Uh, can I find one that is a better price? So this was it. So this is a Gorman crossbody bag. So that's bag number one. The next distractor bag is this one over here. So this one is clearly a distractor for the Bottega Mini Jodie. This one I purchased off eBay. I don't talk about her a lot because she is... Um, you know, a dupe <laughs> rather than the real thing. This one has no logo. I purchased it off eBay and um, although she's very beautiful and I would definitely carry her on a fancy night out when I want like a clutch like bag, um, I think you can appreciate that she is very stiff. She's like cardboard and I haven't been able to get that very pretty slouch that I want. <laughs> I love how it is decked out in all these diamantes. I absolutely love it. I think it's so, so cute. And for an evening out, when I'm not actually having to use the bag that much, meaning I don't have to get in and out of the bag that much, and really all I'm doing is carrying it on my arm, th this fits the purpose just fine. I have tried out the real Bottega Mini Jodi in store, and just like 
what everyone thinks. I think the zipper is too cumbersome and accessing it is too annoying. So this has completely scratched my itch for wanting the original Bottega Mini Jody. I won't link this because the quality is not that wonderful. It's just something that has done the, the job of distracting me. <laughs> Ta-da! This bag. I haven't talked about this bag that much on my channel. Clearly, this bag is inspired by the Loewe Mini Puzzle Bag. It is in one of their classic colours. Do I like this bag? You bet I do. You bet I do. I love this one that I bought and I feel like I don't need to buy the real thing. Now, firstly, because I don't actually think this bag is perfect. There's lots of good things about it, but there's a lot of things that are really annoying about it. I actually really like the layout or the construct slash design slash function of the Loewe puzzle bag in general. But the gripe that I have about the Loewe puzzle bag is that Loewe has gone ahead and changed the design of the edge bag and I understand the edge puzzle bag is cheaper to make and is less material as well. Based on its design, it doesn't look like it folds down unlike the puzzle bag which is meant to be um, foldable. That's, the, that's how they designed it. Perhaps not the mini but the original puzzle bag. Whereas the dupes, they are still all the old design. So in my mind, I can't make sense of paying more for the designer version, which is inferior to the dupes that are available on Amazon and Etsy. This one has no logo anywhere. So usually the anagram is up here and this one has no logo. And the reason I like this bag is because number one, I didn't pay that much for it. And you know, the bag is not perfect from the point of view of this opening being quite small and me scratching my hand every time I use it. I'm not into scratchy zippers, but I couldn't help myself but want to try it. I also actually really like this sort of design where the top handle is laid so flat against the bag. It's just so efficient. It works like it should work. It is a top handle. It stays there. It doesn't flop down. You can reach it really easily. Just grab it like that. Because the strap drop is not so generous, um, you get a lot of purchase on the bag when you go and pick it up. And you could still put it on um, your forearm, just like that. So I find this bag just, it just works. It just works, especially for the price that I paid for. I did want to try the small, so this one is the mini, the small is the next size up. But unfortunately, I purchased this off Etsy, now I remember. Etsy started going around to get rid of all these inspired bags. So that listing of the smaller bag was taken down. And every other single Loewe puzzle dupe that I have found are not dupes, they're fakes because the Anagram logo is on there. Um, but I really enjoy this bag for, say, um, when I take my daughter to the playground and I need just a small bag to hang on to my phone and my ID. This works really well. And obviously when I am out and about with my daughter, I tend to go to places where bags are somewhat high risk from the point of view of, you know, potentially birthday cakes <laughs> getting on it, mud or sand or wind or seawater, all that kind of great stuff can get on it. So this is why this bag is much more perfect than the real thing for me. This one, this is my Made Well Piazza Mini Crossbody Bag. So I purchased this one to distract myself from the Louis Vuitton Neverfull BB. As you can see, the silhouette is somewhat similar. It's got the shape of the Neverfull. It's got these two top handles. It doesn't have any zipper. It closes with a button closure and it does have a long strap as well. Other than the magnetic closure over there, it also closes with these drawstrings. And that looks really cute as well. See, now it looks like the Loewe Flamenco bag. Now I really like this bag because of how soft it is. It was also extremely affordable and it also fits so much because of how soft this leather is. You'll never believe it, it actually fits a long wallet as well in addition to other things. If you're curious, I have done a what fits video for this bag. Go ahead and check it out. I've also done an unboxing of it as well and I think I did a review as well. I'll link them all in the description box below. My memory is failing me a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> it was also really affordable. I bought it on sale. Unfortunately, this exact version 
the last time I checked, has been discontinued by Madewell. They still seem to have the, the full-size Piazza crossbody bag, so that one's just a little bit longer and it presents more like a bucket bag. Um, yeah, so this bag I purchased and now I don't necessarily want the Neverfull BB anymore. All right, next bag is from Coach and this is like one of my favorite bags in my collection. I don't use her that much because she's very seasonal. Uh, you might, oh, there you go, you can spot her already. So this bag over here, woohoo, hello, hello, I just want to pet her. So this is the Swinger, <laughs> excuse me. This is the Swinger bag with the shearling monogram. Oh, how cool is this? I've taken off the straps. Where are the straps? Um, okay, let me just put one of the straps on so you can see what it's like. It's got such a beautiful link strap. It is like so, so cool. Now, is that not the bomb? How cool is that? I absolutely love it. Sure, it's a bit collapsed at the moment because it's empty, but I purchased this bag because it reminded me of the Fendi shearling range and I wasn't going to pay Fendi prices for a shearling. And this one was a relatively good deal. I can't remember how much it was, but I think it was about 500 and something Australian dollars. Uh, yeah, I'll link the unboxing in the description box, but this was a bag that I could not... I, I could not sleep over. It was literally keeping me awake. So I saw this bag in uh, David Jones here in Australia, in Adelaide, and it was it was haunting me. I lost sleep for two days and I decided it was not worth it. So I went ahead and purchased it. I don't use it that much, as I said, because it's quite seasonal. And often when I go out for dinner and somewhere fancy, especially like wintertime at night, I, I want to carry some of my other designer bags. That's why I don't wear it that much. But here you go. I still absolutely love this bag. And since I bought this, I have not wanted to buy any of the Fendi Shirling. So another win over here. I'm just going to break up the rhythm a little bit and jump away from bags. This is another inspired item that I purchased that now has killed my desire to buy the real thing. And here she is. How cute is that? Obviously, this is a bag charm. Leather bag charm inspired by one from Hermes. This one I purchased from Etsy. Um, <laughs> check out her hair. You know what happened? It totally got wet in the rain. The hair on the neck is meant to be somewhat straighter, a little bit like this over here. And sure, it had started to curl a little bit, but um, <laughs> it, since it got wet in the rain, um, it's curled a lot more. It's gotten like really funky, really funky, just like that. And you have no idea how this experience of me getting it wet in the rain has made me so grateful that this is not the real Hermes because it would just like kill my soul, kill my soul. So there we go. I'm so glad that I didn't buy the real thing and I absolutely love this one because she is, you know, she's got this black and white stripes and it contrasts so nice against some of my really plain bags. When I want to zhuzh up some of my bags, especially if they're just plain black, I love hanging this bag charm on them. Now that I think of it, I think that this is a really good tag video topic. So that's what I'm going to turn it into. So I'm going to be tagging a few of you to do this video. Show me your distraction bags or distraction items. Did they distract you from the real thing? Or do you totally recommend avoiding distractor bags and just going for the real thing? So this next bag that I'm about to show you is actually a luxury bag in itself but I purchased it to distract myself from another luxury bag and it is this one over here. This is my Celine Edge bag and this one is in the size small. I did purchase this pre-loved and it is, I think it's such a cool bag. I've always loved the tri-color of this bag. I particularly love this color, this berry color over here. I think I just find it so charming. So it's got this berry color here and then on the sides it is like this tamarind orange and it is this darker burgundy on the back of it and this one is a pretty nice tote it is quite structured um yeah like that so that's how it carries so this bag i purchased it to distract myself from a few hermes bags i find this is a combination of a few hermes bags um i guess what i'm talking about is there is a tricolor kelly out there one of my friends here on youtube although she's not as active on youtube at the moment um, Loki from Life with Loki, she has the tricolor Kelly that I was, I was so gaga over when she showed it. I was like, oh, 
Oh my gosh, that is so, so amazing. And there's another Hermes bag that walked the runway um, a few years ago. Maybe it was like 2022 or 2023. Maybe 2022. I'll put up the video, but essentially it had one of these bags that had these wraparound zips as well. So I felt like, oh my gosh, this is like, it, it's like Hermes took two bags and made <laughs> their own bags out of this specific design. So that's why I got really excited and I went ahead and uh, purchased this one. I did get it for a very good price off Vestia Collective. Um, it is a bag that has some wear and tear. Not that I mind because I was very taken by it. The original Hermes Tricolor Kelly, Victoria Beckham also owns it actually. Um, that one is in box leather and if I had to pay Hermes prices for box leather just to get that colorway, I don't think I could stomach using it. <laughs> so I am so glad that I found this version and I'm so happy that it's in my collection and I don't want to buy the real thing anymore. Next bag is from Gucci and if you follow my channel, you might be able to guess which one I'm about to show you. Ta-da! This is my Gucci Micro Gucci Sima Dome Mini Bag. Something like that. Um, I love this bag in terms of its color and I love the micro Gucci Sima debossing double top handle. Clearly this is a bag that is inspired by the Louis Vuitton Elmer BB. I have mentioned this in numerous videos where it was a time where I was obsessed about the Louis Vuitton Elmer BB but I happened to come across this one at the Woodbury Commons outlet stores and this was cheaper although it was leather it was cheaper than the canvas Louis Vuitton Elmer BB. Um, I absolutely love the shape of it, I love the colour, I love that it's leather and I love this one so much. If I ever encountered it in a different colour again I would certainly be bouncing and buying another one for myself. So yeah this one has distracted me from purchasing the Louis Vuitton Elmer BB. So highly recommend. I cannot recommend this bag enough. Love it. Especially if you love the Elmer BB. Okay, so those were all the bags that were absolute successes. So since I've bought them, I don't want the real thing. But now I'm going to move on to the maybes. So I'm not really sure. I think, you know, I like the dupes, but I, I'm i not sure if I still want the real thing. I'm, yeah, I'm on the fence. First one is this one over here. This is uh, a dupe for the Hermes. Lindy 26. The look of it I absolutely love and the function of it I absolutely love as well. I purchased this off eBay a number of years ago. It is such a great bag for work. Um, I really like the colour as well but you know um, I've owned it for quite a while. I put it through the ringer. There are times where I've had to leave it in the boot under a scorching Adelaide summer heat and this bag was boiling by the time I got back. This bag is supposed to be real leather and it smells like real leather I'll be honest. So there you go that's great. I have noticed some wear and tear though after some time it's potentially because there's such a heavy coating on it so if I show you these top handles over here so there is some peeling of the paint of the leather um, and that's on both sides. So I can only assume it's melted slash rubbing off. The other thing that I've noticed, obviously this is not Hermes leather, so I don't expect it to behave like Hermes leather. It was very boxy when it first came and the structure was uh, certainly present and I had to train it to slouch like this. But at the same time, since it started to slouch, it's kind of maintained this shape as well. I guess what I'm referring to, I've seen some other used Lindy 26s in real life, you know, with real Hermes leather, those Lindy bags have turned like into a puddle when the owners put it down. The whole bag just like flops and, and flattens into a puddle. It's not necessarily a great sight, I think, because the bag looks really worn. Um, but I guess I'm just trying to point out that, you know, clearly there are differences between dupes as well as the real thing. I love the function of this bag but you know I've seen some wear and tear and clearly the leather is different from real Hermes. I would love to get more of these bags. At the moment I kind of have too many bags but if I wanted to add bags to my collection I would love to add a you know one of these bags either another inspired one or the real thing. I'm kind of tossing up which one I should get. Um, I guess I'll decide when the time comes. Now moving away from bags again I'm going to move on to an accessory. Ta-da! So here I have a dupe of the Hermes Kelly belt. 
I have wanted the Kelly belt for the longest time. I think it is so versatile. It kind of just, um, you know, you, you buckle it up and then it's completely adjustable. So you can wear it on the jean, you can wear it uh, low on the hips with jeans, or you can wear it higher up with dresses. This one I purchased off Amazon. It is a product that has gone really viral. Everyone talks about it. So I went ahead and purchased it. Um, and I did it so that I could match it with uh, my bag. I'll show you my bag in a minute. <laughs> what I've noticed is, so I haven't used it that much and I've noticed that the quality is pretty blah. <laughs> so let me show you. Um, obviously Amazon product, so bear that in mind. Can you see here? So that paint has already come off the edge over there and then if I rotate it around you can see on the top edge over there some paint has already come off. And some of the glazing has already peeled off, like over there. So um, I haven't used this that much at all, maybe five times. So uh, yeah, I can say that the quality is not, not, not super, super wonderful. I was hoping that, you know, this belt would help me get over the real thing. Uh, but at this point in time, I, I don't think so yet. Let me show you the next bag and it's in the ta-da! Here she is. And those of you who follow me, you're not unfamiliar with her. I love, I love this bag. I love talking about her. I love using her. So this is clearly a dupe of the Hermes Kelly Pochette. Um, you know, if I were to purchase this on the pre-loved market, this would be like 30 to 50,000 Australian dollars. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. This bag is from Millie Bags. I love her so, so much. I think firstly, she's so beautiful. I love taking her for travel. So when I travel, I usually do double bag. I carry a backpack for practical reasons. I love having, having just my essentials and my important documents inside this bag so I can wear it crossbody in front of me. And um, <laughs> you'd be surprised how much this sort of annoying opening and closure it made me feel so secure. There was one time, so this was a time when I was in Amsterdam and I was in the flea market. Um, so most of the time I carried the bag like this, but because I had it behind me, there were quite a few people around. So in order to increase the security, I just put one of the sandals and uh, secured it like that. And I think if someone was trying to pickpocket me, it's just a bit, a bit more work to try and undo the bag. So I felt like it made me um, less of a target. And... As I was talking about the last belt, I purchased this belt to, to wear together with this bag because they have the matching buckle. I know the color is not exactly the same, but um, at the time I was just like, well, I'll just buy it and see what happens. So this one is from Amazon. This one is from Millie Bags. Millie Bags actually does carry a dupe for the Kelly belt as well. So potentially what I might do is I might go ahead and purchase the Kelly belt or the Kelly inspired belt from Millie Bags and that way the color will also match and I have a feeling that the one from Millie Bags will have better quality as well as, you know, this one, this one's from Amazon and the quality of this bag has really exceeded my expectations. Hopefully the belt will do the same. Now, let's talk about this bag now and whether it has properly distracted me. I've put this one in the maybe category as well. Um, I do really like this bag and I do really enjoy using her. But I feel like if this was a real Hermes bag, it would really take the joy out of me using her because of how much it costs and how difficult she is to replace. So it, it's a maybe. I really love the bag. Maybe one day when I get to billionaire status, I might be totally fine wearing this and chucking it around. Uh, anyway, one can dream, isn't it? Okay, I talked about the Lindy 26 and now we have its baby version. This is the mini Lindy. This one, um, my sister helped me buy from Lazada, which is a website in Malaysia. I guess it's Malaysia's version of Amazon and, you know, they do sell a lot of dupes on that website. So here we are. I... I really, really enjoyed using this bag. I talked about my Coach Burrow bowling bag. Um, is it still here? No, I've put it away already. So that bag I had with me in Malaysia and I used it for travel. And then when I went back to Malaysia, my sister passed this bag to me. Um, so I used this bag for half the time as well. And it surprised me how I did not want to switch out of this bag. I found it really easy to use, so although it's got all these bits and bobs, what I found really easy was just to zip up one sangle and to 
um, secure it like that and it was just like so easy to use especially because the bag is so small I could grip the base with one hand it meant that I could manipulate the bag really easily and the biggest game changer is actually this huge opening because it meant that in such a small bag you had this practically infinite amount of circulation space up here where you can manipulate and arrange things rather than you know if it's just like a little zippered entry that you have to go in and try and arrange things inside the bag like that it gets really uncomfortable but because this opening is so huge it is such a pleasure to use I would say and because of that you can actually really stuff the bag and still use it really comfortably. Um, I have mentioned in one of my videos in uh, yeah my Malaysia shopping haul video that I do think that this strap the strap length of the dupe version is shorter than the real one and I actually really like this strap length yeah so I don't know although I do like this bag and potentially if I ever got a chance to purchase it from Hermes I would have to take into account the strap drop because I, I I'm not interested in a super long strap so I just need to confirm whether the strap on the real thing is really that super long and I have a sneaky suspicion that it might disappoint me so but at the moment I'm just keeping an open mind about whether I buy the real thing or not next bag which is a maybe is this one over here this is the coach Hadley <laughs> this is the coach Hadley 20 or 21 I'll put the correct name on screen this one I purchased because it reminds me so much of the Hermes Picatin and the Hermes Picatin my issue with that is that it has no long strap and therefore it's either handheld or crook of the arm and I'm not at a stage in my life where I can tolerate those kinds of bags my lifestyle just doesn't accommodate those bags and the other thing was the color reminds me of pale pistachio which is such a beautiful color from Hermes I do like that this bag has silver hardware which makes it such a casual cute bag so this bag has gone into my maybe pile because Sometimes when I look at the Hermes Picatin, I find that I still kind of want to try out the real thing. And, um, you know, Jessie Style loves that bag and I can't help but feel somewhat influenced by her. So I just don't know yet. I, yeah, I, I just don't know yet. I have to um, wait for my life to progress. And if I get to a stage where I can tolerate a handheld or crook of the arm bag, I might consider purchasing the Picatin. But this bag will do just fine for now. It has a long strap, I've got to mention, which is the game changer um, between this one and the Picatin. Okay, so those were all the maybes. These ones are the no's. So they did not scratch my itch and I still want the real thing. So this first bag over here, ta-da! This is the mini backpack, a mini backpack from um, Age Athletica. I purchased it because, I mean, I do think it's very cute. It's a small backpack with these giant uh, zipper pulls, which kind of look obnoxious, but really in your face. And this one has fixed shoulder straps as well, just like a backpack. So I purchased this because I was hoping it would distract me from the Louis Vuitton Palm Strings Mini. I know that's not a current bag anymore. It's not that trendy. It's still on the website, I should say. So it is a current bag, but it's not trendy at the moment. And I was looking for a mini backpack. To distract me and this one was a pretty good price I did get it on sale I have used it a couple of times it fits uh, an okay amount of things still not enough for a full day out with my daughter I do appreciate it in my collection what I did notice when I took it out once with my daughter was how easily it picked up dirt you know how some materials sometimes you put it down on the floor you lift it up you don't see any dirt stuck on it but this one the dirt practically just it almost just vacuumed <laughs> dirt against it. I was like, what's all these black stains on it? And I had to come home and clean it up. It just, it's almost like if you think of gauze or some cottons that are really absorbent, it just wants to do that, it seems. Fortunately, I was able to, I, uh, sorry, actually, I didn't just wipe it off. I stuck it in the washing machine, um, you know, <laughs> and it came out pretty good, which is, it's pro. So although I still love this bag, I still find myself thinking of the Palm Strings Mini and that's just that. Will I ever buy the Palm Strings Mini? I don't know. I don't know. I'm coming to my senses a little bit in terms of not wanting to buy so many luxury handbags. At the moment, the bag that I really want is the Louis Vuitton side trunk. So I'm kind of a bit focused on that. And I'm thinking to myself, if I buy one luxury handbag per year, 
that will be okay. I've already bought two coach bags this year and I also bought my Louis Vuitton X Murakami Rita bag. So that's kind of like uh, one luxury handbag and two contemporary bags. So I feel like I've met my quota for the year already. I'm kind of saving my quota bag <laughs> for, for next year. Right now I'm semi-settled, which is a good thing. Do I still want the Palm Strings Mini? I do still catch myself thinking about it. So for that reason, this one has not has not uh, quenched my appetite. This beautiful bag from Parissa Wang. This has a new name. I think it's called the Grace Pillow Bag. I purchased it because it's puffy. This has clearly made my list of bags that haven't distracted me. I was, or I am, <laughs> still in love with the Louis Vuitton puffer bag. Not Louis Vuitton, Saint Laurent puffer bag. I still think that bag is really cool. I still think it's really nice. Every time I go into Saleron, I want to go and try it on. Or every time I see it in a, like a consignment store, I go and try it on. I still really like that bag. This bag is really beautiful. I love the puffiness and the herringbone design of it. It looks super elegant. The color is really nice. And out of all the bags that I've opened up today, this leather smell is still very nice. So in terms of the quality of this bag, it is... Uh, great quality, um, nice to carry, but unfortunately hasn't hasn't been able to distract me from wanting the Saleron puffer. Okay, the next bag or the next bags, let me present them together because this one's kind of a, a confusing story. Here we are. My two Louis Vuitton, I'll call them multicolor bags. This one, this one is my Louis Vuitton X Murakami collaboration Rita bag. Uh, in the noir color or the black color, multicolor, very beautiful. And then here is my Louis Vuitton Speedy 25 from the Yayoi Kusama collaboration. All right, so what went on here? I've been wanting something from the Murakami collection for the longest time. So this was before I had neither bags, but I could not find one at a price and condition that I was willing to pay. So when the Yayoi Kusama collection dropped, I was like, oh, that's somewhat like the Murakami collection, you know, Japanese artist, multicolor. And I actually do really like the look of this bag. FOMO did get the best of me and I just went ahead and purchased it. I actually bought the pumpkin one as well, but there was issues with that bag so I had to return it and I never got the chance to buy it back again. Um, if you want to know, you can watch the videos. I'll link them in the description box below. So funnily, <laughs> in my mind, I thought, okay, this is going to be Yayoi Kusama's last collaboration with Louis Vuitton. So if I want one of these colorful bags, you know, I better jump on it and buy it and don't wait for it to run out because what will happen is I'll have to pay a premium on it on the pre-love market. So I took the opportunity and purchased this bag and I wanted to buy this bag to satisfy my hunger or my appetite for the Murakami collection. But unfortunately, it actually did not <laughs> um, because I guess I paid so much for this bag. I paid like 4,000 Australian dollars for this bag, which was the retail price of the bag. But I felt like, oh, this bag was so expensive. Let me see if I can find, still go and hunt down a cheaper Murakami one. And I did. But <laughs> the problem is, oh, this is such a good story, isn't it? So the problem is it weighs a ton and I find it really unuser friendly or user unfriendly, <laughs> however you say it. So this bag is going to leave my collection at some stage, probably sometime next year. I'm going to put it up for consignment. Um, because it's rumored that Louis Vuitton is going to do another Murakami collaboration. Perhaps I will pick a bag up from that collection. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be a dream if they did a soft trunk in the next Murakami collection? I better save up some money. So how about that roundabout bizarre story about <laughs> which bag was trying to distract me? Okay, like the last bag or the second last bag I'm about to show you. Um, this one over here. So another luxury handbag that was meant to be a distractor handbag for the creme de la creme. Oh, this smells really good. So this is my Saleron envelope bag in the medium size. I thought this bag was absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. But at the same time, why is it a distractor bag? It's a distractor bag because the bag that I actually wanted was the Chanel Classic Flap. So I guess more or less I wanted both. But I was really hoping that purchasing this bag was going to help me get over the Chanel Classic Flap. I mean, it's got a lot of features of the Chanel Classic Flap, isn't it? So it's got 
um, a flap at the front. Sure, it doesn't have a turn lock, but it's a magnetic opening. It's got these four grommets, which means that you can convert the bag from a shoulder bag to a crossbody bag really easily. And then also there is a back pocket as well. And aesthetically, she's really elegant. But clearly, it did not distract me from the Chanel Classic flap because Loco came to join the family. <laughs> So this is my Chanel classic flap. This one is in caviar leather and it is in the medium size. The color is a deep burgundy and she comes with silver hardware. Um, she's one of my holy grail bags and I think if you have a holy grail bag, I would recommend that you go ahead and buy the holy grail bag for all the other sort of peripheral bags that you don't really have like super strong feelings for sure go ahead and buy a distractor one to try it out first to check that you're sure <laughs> that you want to buy the more expensive version this was a case where the distractor bag despite it being a very beautiful luxury handbag as well did not work to distract me um, and here we are i have done a full comparison video between these two bags and in that video i did say i regretted purchasing this one because I think if I bought this one, I would have been able to get over the YSL one and not purchase this. It would have saved me quite a few thousand dollars. Buying the Saint Laurent bag distracted me from buying the classic flap, in which case I spent money to buy this one and some time passed, which meant that I had to cop a number of years of price increases on the Chanel classic flap. And we all know <laughs> how costly a mistake like that can be. So I guess that's my summary. I hope you enjoyed this video. There was certainly a lot of eye candy and I have a lot of tidying up to do tonight. So I shall be doing that. Definitely check out the description box to see if I tagged you or not. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see your video. If I didn't tag you, but you're interested in doing this video, certainly tag me as well so that I know to go and watch your video. I absolutely love this topic. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Help me grow my channel. Certainly subscribe, come back for more videos. I would love to have you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.